VG gamers turn to ban. Evil geniuses turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. VG Gamers turn to ban. Evil geniuses turn to pick. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second to last day of the Mars TV Dota 2 League. Things get really spicy Ten now. Seconds, Evil three. Geniuses and Vici Gaming will be facing off. The draft has just begun. It's a best of three Five series. Seconds, Loser three. will be eliminated in the lower bracket, Ben. Vici Let's see the draft. Yeah. This, this is an exciting match because I thought it'd be a winner's bracket match. Yeah. Uh, I actually I wasn't sure how Vici would do, but you definitely expect EG to be in the winner's bracket uh, at this stage of the tournament. So that was the surprise. The other surprise is just how badly Vici got manhandled yesterday by Ehom. They looked so dominant against the Western teams earlier in the tournament, but uh, it seems that Ehom, just, Lanham just had their number with the drafts and their individual play was off the charts. Ehom's play is too fast, and... Vici are really good at destroying the greedy VG teams, but Ehom are just good at ending the game in 20 minutes. So, And then everything just kind of went their way in all those games. But let's look at the draft here as it has begun. EG, they ban out the disruptive Fenrir hero. So they remove the Spirit Breaker and the Night Stalker, both in phase one. Then they pick the Venge, which is a support Vici have been prioritizing. As for Vici, uh, the big team fight specialist, the Earth Spirit, the Void get removed. Uh, and that does leave uh, Vici with... The Lone Druid Witch Doctor reply. Now, this is definitely a change from them. They have not been running Lone Druid. Uh, frankly, most of the Chinese teams have, and I think Ehome ran it once yesterday, but in general, it's not been high priority. So, thoughts on the draft as uh, EG grabbed the Invoker here? Vici almost always ban out teamfight heroes against Evil Genie, so it's kind of making them draft um, greedy Ur heroes that don't excel at constant Vici teamfighting. Like, what, like Witch Doctor is a good example of a hero that Vici want and Evil Genius is um, kind of want, but they're kind of left into drafting some other supports that they don't want. Uh, so, uh, a good partner here for the Lone Druid gets removed, your Juggernaut. If yep. they want to go for the heavy push Ten early, I already have the Witch remaining. Doctor. So EG expecting the Ice Ice Ice. I guess Ice 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 Five also plays remaining. Juggernaut, so... In theory, it could even be an offlane Jug, but uh, more likely expecting him to be handling the Lone Druid. The Lone Druid pick is very interesting, though, because they EG picked it twice, and VG won against it both times very easily, and the Lone Druid was kind of not even an issue for them. But then again, they did have Spirit Breaker that time, so they could dive him and get to him very, very easily because there wasn't any sick uh, Savage Roars. So maybe because they don't Ten have access to Spirit Breaker, remaining. they decide that they don't actually want to deal with the Lone Druid. And Lone Druid is actually still really good at pushing down Five lanes um, and playing well into Vici's 5 man style in a 15 to 30 minute, as long as you don't have to wait He's too long for the Radiance. So Vici, do ban the Prophet. We saw... I think it was Arteezy play Nature's Prophet versus Lone Druid yesterday, and after Fear ganked his lane as Bounty Hunter, he was really dominating the lane once he got the phase boots and just kept on right-clicking the hero and forcing him out of lane. So it actually seemed like a, if you get that little boost at the beginning, it can be a pretty good matchup. Yeah, I think the Lone Druids might have to change change builds if they're versus an NP lane. Too often they're used to relying on their bear to harass too much, but you might have to build slightly more defensively. Mm-hmm. Maybe get an earlier boots on the hero. VG earlier boots, Gamers more regen. Uh, you know, Iron Talon, the tr treants every time he summons them. Uh, are EG going to go for their, their Chen or Enigma here? And they ban out the Bounty Hunter. And that's normally the Vici counter to it. 
Which one do you think they'd prefer here? The Enigma for sure. Chen, the Evil Geniuses have had a pretty set hero pool for a while, but they're trying to expand. Five Earth Spirit, remaining. they're like three and zero with, I think. Chen, they're one and two. And then the two that they actually haven't experimented with too much is Oracle and Wisp. But Wisp is a, t is a hero that a lot of Western teams like, but EG still kind of haven't ventured into that territory. Yeah, they seem kind of allergic to Wisp. I, I can't even recall. No, they they just does EG don't. have any recorded games on the hero? Uh, I checked recently and I haven't seen any. In a, in a if there were, it's like got to be like two years ago or something. But it's clear that they're trying to expand their pool a little bit more, especially when some teams are like really good with certain heroes. Like you'll like you know, Earth Spirit is a good example of one that you kind of want in your own hero pool, so it doesn't limit you in your draft. Similar with Chen, mm -hmm. but Vici also don't run Chen, so it's not a big deal in this particular matchup. VG Gaming. Batrider will get banned out by VG. Mm -hmm. So there's still Death Prophet for Super. That's a pretty good one for VG if they want to continue with their older playstyle. But I'm worried he's about. He's also played OD. Yeah, he's played OD a lot too. It's, those have been the main two. Not they don't really go for the Invoker much. No. And in this Not case, obviously EG do have it. So I'm expecting EG will grab most likely Enigma. Maybe not. Maybe they save it for fourth, but VG quite Five likely expecting that with the Bounty Hunter ban. And they are going to go for the Super OD. So now they, they typically have a roaming support for Fenrir, though, so they can actually. But who's, kill who's left at this point? Or Spirit Band, Spirit yeah. Breaker Band, or Spirit. and Night Stalker? And, and Bounty Hunter. Mm -hmm. um, what yeah, there's four roamers banned. Looks like they, I mean, they still can do Roman Potom, although that's not that good versus Invoker, and it's not something that VG like to run too much. I still think Chen would be pretty good, but they haven't played it recently at all. Um, Ten seconds remaining. We saw uh, actually a Roman Enchanter support yesterday as well. Remaining. Though generally, when she's picked, she's in the off lane. Reserve time. Still need some more team fight from EG. I feel like that's kind of their the weakness of their draft that VG just completely took advantage of last time, and. Um, yeah, both heroes, like, okay, AoE, good team fight synergy right now, but, you know, you want that big hero up in front, like a Tidehunter or whatever. Mm, EG grabbing the Visage. Uh, probably, set, I'm guessing it's setting up for an Arteezy Lycan or Drow. They do like there. their Lycan. Tons of minus armor. That's Quas Exor Invoker. And tons of physical damage. They gotta watch the early Roche. They also had a lot of trouble cont uh, contesting Roche, and I think that's one of the reasons why Ehome also won versus Vici very easily is because of uh, the the Roche contest. So I like that they're Five drafting a little bit more in that territory. Conceding too many Roches is an easy way to lose. Vici gave me now the fourth pick, and the big question mark is this Lone Druid. Is it a Burning Lone Druid? Is it an Ice Ice Ice? They're both very proficient on the hero. Uh, they don't have their big initiator. I mean, the majority of the Vici games we've seen, Ice 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 has been... Well, I guess that answers your question. It is going to be the Ice 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 Druid with the Burning Gyro getting grabbed up here. But the majority of their games, they've had like a Phoenix in the offlane or a Darkseer for Daryl, but they won't have that this time around. Oh, what is going to be for <laughs> OLR2? Or Lycan is not going to have a good matchup versus the Lone Druid at all. And his summons will die very easily versus Drow OD. Wind. It is Drow, so... Yeah, I was, I was thinking I was Lycan or Drow. Yeah, They've been better. playing more Lycan, but... I think, like you said, doesn't fit all that well, especially not now with the OD pick. They need some armor on Vici, though. Something like a Dazzle. Dazzle would be good, yeah. Round it out nicely. What other support Sven? <laughs> uh, EG actually banned support Sven a lot in 5th ban if they're going for a heavy physical Five damage threat. Remain. So I wouldn't even be surprised if they banned it. Or a Crimson Guard carrier, but that would that would kind of... If it's greedy. It would be greedy. But that's that's the kind of item itemization that you want versus EG. They don't have a mech carrier, nor do they have a Crimson Guard carrier, nor do they have any plus armor. I, I mean, you can kind of count Lone Druid's ultimate a little bit <laughs> if you really want to, but that's not doesn't mm -hmm. really help your team. Well, Fichi, they ban a, a beefcake. They'll remove the Tide Hunter, and they are looking for that universe team fight specialist, likely. Vici value the Tidehunter a lot versus the Lone Druid because it's a difficult matchup for the Lone Druid because he doesn't have any damage. 
and it's just a good good frontliner. Doesn't really care too much about getting rooted, and will almost always be able to get anchor smash. It kind of limits his farm and lane a lot, and they used it versus the EG. So I'm not too surprised to see them ban it. What else is left for EG if they want that initiator? Not a very good clockwork game. He doesn't play Shaker that often. There's Phoenix. Tusk? Phoenix, I think, is okay. Phoenix is pretty... A puck, maybe, with the Drow as well. Alright. But Puck doesn't really do that much Video against these Vichy heroes. Uh-oh. Winter Wyvern. Ooh. Could Take, be... Taking away PPD's favorite hero. Yeah. Well, not his favorite, but one of his favorite. Cold Embrace on the bear? Oh my goodness, it heals so much. But who needs armor when you have Cold Embrace? As long as he doesn't get silenced or... I guess the yeah, by main heroes seem to be Puck or Phoenix as far as... Ten seconds remaining. Team fight specialists for the offlane that are viable here. Maybe Tusk? Five seconds remaining. I think they need someone up in front though. Yeah. Like to... That's what I was thinking. I'm like, who who is that hero? Hmm, I'm not sure. It's tough against the gyro pick, that's what really limits EG here. Who can actually lane against it? What else does he play? Earth Shaker. Yeah, just the Earth Shaker. Yeah, they haven't played it that much, but it's the kind of team fight. I, I, that they need. I feel like there weren't many great options for EG with, with that pick. I mean, this is serviceable, but. Yeah, VC actually typically ban out the Earth Shaker, but I guess m most of the time they're scared of the PPD Shaker. So, overall, EG do go for a pretty heavy pushing lineup. You mentioned they're great at taking the Roshan. They do have some team fight in late game, but generally you look at this draft and say they want to end the game fairly Their early. Their draft is much more early game-centric, though, than the other prior drafts that they had versus VG. And VG kind of with a similar style, although the big difference is that Isis is not on an initiator. I think he played Tide and Phoenix. And he has oh, Dark, Dark Seer, Tide, and Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, those were the big three. But Ten this time it's a Lone Druid instead, so it turns out that Vici actually have the quote-unquote greedier Five lineup this time, remain. although it still has a ton of team fight. And But this time they draft a Gyrocopter for burning instead of like a Slark, which is, you know, less team fighty. so they, I mean, they actually balance it. I don't know if you got to see the whole Ehome uh, Vici series yesterday, but Burning was Prepare ganking on Terrorblade at like eight minutes into the game. He's been... He's made, it's like, almost no matter what, he'll come to the fight. Even if he's not necessarily needed, it seems like they have made a very deliberate decision as a team that Bernie needs to join all the early fights. So, I mean, I guess in that regard, Gyro fits in quite nicely. They play well around the strengths of their lineup, so I, I like that they do that with Burning, because, you know, they're no longer, like, they don't rely on Burning Anti-Mage or how Anti-Mage or whoever maybe that's playing their carry position. They're very heavy in on the on the mid game, and that requires a carry to set up a good foundation. Do you see the bears scouting things out already in the dire woods, trying to figure out where these EG heroes are hiding? As Arteezy also keeps tabs on his own woods, but he's getting a little nervous, hiding behind the tree line here. As Vici march in, they do scout out Arteezy right away, so they're any intel they needed about the lanes is now confirmed. Are they gonna aggro? It's it's really tough for to throw Visage and Venge, but I, I don't think they will. Maybe just getting intel at the start of the game. It's not a very good aggro tri lane. Witch Doctor, is, Wyvern, it is, Gyro. It is. Gyro's decent. Gyro's the best one of the three, but it's it's still insanely difficult. Maybe if they didn't have three range and just two range on EG's lineup, begins. it'd be okay. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, EG just have so much damage. So, LD did not start off with a full Iron Talon build, but close. I th I'm not sure if he's going to pick it up on chicken and start jungling, but it's... I guess close. it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on how the lane looks, but I imagine he'll, he'll get the Iron Talon at some point. Yeah, you don't want to lose your tower early versus uh, Dro, so it's still nice to have like a stout and tank up a little bit. Yeah, the armor helps as well. So, Super versus Sumail mid. Looks like Sumail got the slightly better block, but Super going to aggro the creeps back to even things out. So Visage is starting off on bottom. That's the very interesting early two v two early part. Yeah, they want Universe to have a a better start. It's still very difficult though. I think he can he can die if he's not too careful. It's like the Venge making a move on the mid lane right now. PPD trying to set up, but there is a Radiant Ward there to scout him out. So Lundra did the pull around on top. 
So he has like a free at least level two, I would say, maybe two and a half on him. So that's pretty nice for him. Sending the bear in on an aggressive mission here. Yeah, he's just dragging the creeps around. It's not completely necessary because one of the supports on EG is already on bottom. Uh, but it's still nice so he can farm in his safety. Notice Venge has already warded up his camp too, expecting the Iron Talon play. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Venge, PPD is now rejoined the top lane, so... It it's strange though that they did this because he doesn't actually have to go jungle because they only committed one support. I think this would have... Right, normally normally you, you ward him and then you force him into the jungle. Yeah. But uh, now that they might try, it's going to be harder to do it. So it looks like they haven't been able to stop Gyro's farm at all. So it turns out that EG's like 2-1-2 two, two, two is not going particularly well for them yet. Uh, but at least Earthshaker's getting levels, which he might not have been able to do before. So what's Dro's build? One Frost Arrow. What's she skilled at? We've seen every possible build on this here. I've seen players totally skip Frost Arrows. I've seen some max at first. Yeah. Uh, are value points in silence? No point in silence. I think... He usually likes to go heavy, heavy stats. Trust Arrows is a pretty good value point, right, at level 1? Well, you always want it for lane so you can harass if you... Yeah, without getting the creep aggro. Contest. So, did he skill, skill Roar at 2 or Rabid? Ice, Ice, Ice. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's a Roar. Or it's or Rabid. Rabid. <laughs> I guess given the way the lane started, it didn't look like he would need the Roar, but as it turns out, he might to survive because they have the Visage just waiting around the trees. I don't think Ice 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 has actually seen Fear yet. Well, now he has. I think th for this gank, he would have preferred the Venge to roll around the tower, though, because now they can't actually get a, get a stun on him without him. Uh, he's in a really good position. And at this point, I think they... Oh, mid lane. Almost found the kill there on the Invoker. Barely able to walk oh, away. He's moving around, but he, I think it might be too late. I think the opportunity's passed, and his invis is almost going to be over. It's over now. Uh, there's, there's and no he, now he's scouted as well. Good effort by PPD, but Ice Ice Ice. Excellent positioning there, able to dodge the potential gank. Oh, close call, though, for Sumail, with the, the Wyvern showing that he could still be a very annoying support in the laning stage. In his own right. Yeah, did go for the early boots on FY. So overall, normally you see a drow draft and you expect that, that team to dominate the lanes, but it has not really been the case, Ben. I say, say shut down a bit, but everyone else uh, doing quite well. Gyro and OD up on top. They're gonna make it go on mid here, though. They have to banish onto Sumail. He takes a lot of damage. Out comes the Splinter Blast. Not quite enough to kill him off. It does force the universe TP, though. Uh, bottom lane pushed out a bit, so he's not going to miss too much experience here. Going for a four-minute rune on bottom, though. This could be dangerous for Shaker. Ooh. I guess no, no blast. They, I guess. Why was it? Why was his TP so long? The Earth Shaker. It was just the Invoker there, right? Yeah, it seemed like a longer than a three-second TP. If they knew that, they they probably could have proceeded, but I don't think they knew. What has Wyvern been up to aside from harassing mid? Has he stacked at all, or does he don't like it? He's been controlling the, the rune for um, Vichy. And just, I guess maybe anticipating the EG gank and trying to break a smoke if they come, because PPD was off the map for a while. So how's PPD's levels? Not very good. Oh, they're taking a lot of harass. That's a nice double double stack though, Vichy. Really want experience from this camp at the bare minimum, but <laughs> <laughs> but they're not gonna get the five minute spawn, so that's not that bad for Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, but Ice 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 overall, he's getting his levels here, and he did have one big camp to farm with the Iron Talon before the ward came down. I think more importantly, he's uh, wasting a lot of PPD's time. Like PPD got it. Got, he's not able to stack as many camps as he would like. And a message for that matter. Fear's been just try laning here. Yeah. Not gonna have that super fast level six. How is uh how is Fear's levels anyways? Just three? Yeah, that's that's not not great for not great for him. Dream scenario is you just have the visage constantly pulling and yeah. not having to split X XP with the, the Venge. Yeah, and your Venge pressure's mid or pressure's bottom, but They've kind of given up to do two on two a long time ago. Looks like FY wants to set up on mid. Sumail has not seen this rotation, but the Venge might get into position soon to scout him out and tank this one. They need to touch Top him. Top Rune's going to have a bit of a skirmish. PPD. 
does scout out. Do they have detection on the wyvern? There's, I don't think they get a kill without the without the detection. Yeah, because they know he has wex because of yeah. alacrity. Well, they've been sitting under ward for quite some time. And Speechy's turn to group up and look for kills on a core, but not very successful here. And burning with his fast TP ready to go. He is level six now, and that's where EG have to be really careful diving nice ice size, even trying to gank the mid lane. They could very easily get turned around on. So did Arteezy bother to skill Gust? Okay, he did. No, I saw I saw it earlier, I suppose. Uh, so. there's lots of agility. Converging on Ice Ice Ice, but Venge looking for the wraparound, PPD, does have the smoke, he's level 3, but remember, Gyro's got a TP, and actually he doesn't even need it, because he's also rotating to the top lane, they're ready for this EG gank to come through, Sunstrike will connect, they blast Ice 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 down, get the first blood, and it looks like they might just get out in time before Burning arrives, yeah, he couldn't get there. Vici knew that gank was coming, but the timing was just a few seconds off. It was a really good gust on the on the bear too, so the bear couldn't lord the roar off. Arteezy, uh oh, he's stuck around, and now the rock crush comes in. The gust is there. He's gonna need a TP out to escape this one as Vici continue to run him down. It ain't gonna happen. Arteezy caught through the tree line, will drop, but it's a three hero rotation. They get the the drow kill. The rest of EG able to escape. They're so super efficient though. Like super's getting evolved, and normally you miss out a lot in your other lanes, but Wyvern is already just chilling on bottom, trying to make up for his early levels. Yeah, and super will quickly wa waltz his way back to mid. That arcane rune value TP. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's struggling a bit here in the CS department compared to Sumail, though. Only 24 and 13. Normally we see Super dominating his lane more than this. They focus a lot on uh, shutting him down, though. And Avenge was also That's missing the... quite a bit. So Universe, level 4 at 8 minutes in. That's not the best time here, but he got a little me space after what happened in the top lane. Starting to catch up as well. It's a pretty difficult kill, but good wardage by EG. One on, one deep on the top lane and one pretty deep on the bottom lane. Gyro's going top now. Looks like he wants to get a piece of the drow. This is second smoke for Vici. First one didn't... initially didn't look like it would succeed. Now Burning's gonna make his way in. The call down's there. It's on point. Hit Sarteezy for the first one, and I think that's all they need. The barrage coming through. They'll clean up the drow again, and meanwhile on the bottom lane, also action onto the wyvern who gets blasted by his sunstrike, finished off, so EG getting a counter kill, but it's a support for a drow, and tends to take the wheels off a push strat when the drow ranger dies repeatedly, Ben. Very common trade, safe lane for safe laner, but yeah, they're not of equal value, sadly, <laughs> and Vici can convert. Very easily into a push, whereas EG without the Drill Ranger, or without the Drill Ranger, don't really have the damage to pressure bottom lane. Oh, uh, Wyvern just TP back in bottom, but there is the lane ward, as we can see. EG are aware of his position. I splinter blast though. That, that thing is so obnoxious. <laughs> good that... luck diving me. On a top lane too, Vici were really good about splitting up against the gust too. They like kind of swarmed the Drill Ranger, which is exactly what you want to do. Don't want to get hit by multiple men gusts. Burning's just played so aggressively right now, running through the the enemy jungle, scouting for stacks, maybe even looking for a tier 2 tower dive. The ping comes out, he does want to go. Burning turning into the fighting carry. They know that Drow has nowhere to farm, so this is a it's a good play. Uh oh, fear gone. might get caught here. He gets off the grave chill, he's trying for that extra bit of move speed, but the placement is perfect on the cooldown. It's gonna hit Fear twice, does secure the kill, the Fissure comes through, counter play. Can they finish off Fenrir? They sent the Sunstrike the other direction, and that's gonna allow Fenrir to live. PPD ends up going down to the trade, a two for one, Fenrir does finally drop. But EG, again, not getting favorable trades here. Great roar by the Lone Druid. Cast it on the two heroes in the back, and Venge was like, Where are you guys at? And they're like, I got roared back to our tier three, man. <laughs> no, that bear's too scary. That's the. You know, that, I think that's what separates the really good lone druids. Is the, the, the roar decent. timing, yeah. and, and you, like, Mike grind the bear to set it up. Yep. It's the new, new school lone druid. Got to use that to isolate people in fights. It's such a powerful spell. It really is. Like, you can, like, you know, you'll see Clockworks kind of split up fights with their cogs, and Sa Savage Roar, I think, is a very similar similar tool. And then if you isolate one, you just focus down. If, you, if it's two, you cask them. And and Oldie does, also doesn't have to put himself in harm's yeah. way to do it. That's the other part. And he's a carry, 
So he's got that going for him, which is nice. Yep. How is Universe's farm? He's been pretty quiet. Not very good. Not very good. Okay. And what is Drow Ranger getting? Any commitment for lifesteal? Let's go for the Dominator. So we'll, you see RTZ like scout out a lot with Mud Golems. Or they also can really Saders. try for the super early Roche Sneak if he gets uh, an off wolf, but it's very risky against Vichy. And oh, they cursed him. They caught him out here bottom. Fall down gets patiently held and now will connect. It's going to hit RTZ twice. Combine with the Rocket Barrage. RTZ down again. EG just cannot protect the Strong Ranger. That's a risky maneuver by RTZ. He doesn't have vision over there. And he doesn't have a creep to scout out for him. He has a lane war behind the tower, but yeah, nothing his, in the uh, trees. Where's his creep? Does ha I don't know if he's dominated one yet. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. That's strange. He usually Normally he gets it right away. Yeah. He's one of the faster players in that regard. But Vici Gaming, as the game has been opened up a bit by burning, it's going to give Ice 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 room to start farming for the late game. Picks up his Midas now. PPD hunting his bear. And get the hell away from me, says the bear. Can't even snipe that. The supports on EGR are falling behind pretty heavily. They've been all their movements more. have been scouted or anticipated by Vici, or counterplayed in the case of the, the top gyro rotation. It's, it's so hard ganking a bear though. I think they need to commit a lot of smokes. Like Vici have committed, I think two smokes in a row with oh, the gyro doctor. They're gonna smoke now mid. Yeah, it's it's too much of a hassle to gank with the smoke. I think they're roaching. The smoke. Uh, they might be trying I, to sneak roach. I think so, it looks like it. It's only two levels on the on the wave of terror, though. Oh, this is really dangerous if they go into the pit and Vici get suspicious. Mid lane is pushing pretty far towards the dire side, so I think Vici are going to start to ask some questions. But my God, that Roshan is already almost dead. Okay, well, uh, Vici Gaming. I wouldn't even say that they they dropped the ball there. EG just caught them with their pants down. And it only took a couple seconds. You have to scout with a bear, and bear was already on top, so it's a very high percentage play from EG. Nice one. Yeah. Definitely, uh, something you're you're expecting is Vici. You'll probably give up a rush or two, just nature of the EG draft. But Dang, he's level eight. Still a nice play. That's a lot of farm for uh, Winter Wyvern. He's like way more farm than the EG supports. And then you have to deal with this when you want to push. You want to knock down like three towers consecutively with the with the Aegis. Oh, they really want FY. They barely get a vision that connects. They silence him and then lock him in position. Combined with the cold snap, they will get the kill. Meanwhile, Venge in the mid lane. PPD. Got to be careful as Burning was on the prowl. And while this is happening, they have set up a, a hill ward in the dire jungle, the Witch Doctor. So anticipating maybe someone coming to defend this tower or gank the lone druid and Perhaps hoping for an ambush. Even with that kill, it's, like, it's still taking them forever to push down the T1. It looks like Vici might actually get the T1 in mid before they even get oh, the Oh, the swap by TPD into a Fissure. Nice combo. Echo to follow it up. Beautifully handled. EG, some fantastic teamwork there. They'll grab the kill. And they do it on one of the most farmed heroes in the game. Looks like Vici might have to stall until the Radiance. Isis Isis Midas came out around 12. But looks like Soul maybe on pace for a... Nicely timed 20 minute radiance. Yeah, and considering that they tri laned him for a decent part of the laning stage and they warded his camp, that's really impressive. They need some way to jump the draw though in the fights. Ideally, you want a winner's cursor, but uh... they don't have like a good. You know, you want that one hero that just like always on the draw so she doesn't give marksmanship and precision aura to her team, but they don't really have that. Just gotta roar her into your team. <laughs> Send the bear for a backstab mission. But then they have swap, I suppose. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a fast blink. I just saw him a few minutes ago. It's like 600. And he then, got, oh. Did he get the kill in the gyro? I no, think he's zero zero four. No, just an assist. Reliable, good old reliable universe. He really is a stalwart presence for EG. That's only with one tower and Roche, and not that many mutes. But, uh, did you see the Venge moving out here in the dire jungle, I believe, with that ward? No, PPD, he smoked, okay. They really would love to pick this lone druid with the blink reveal, but that is not going to happen, as the blink has been scouted. Ping's already coming out from Vici. Normally you see him s smoke with the support, but EG not quite on the same page here. Yeah, uh, I think they, they wanted to smoke... If they smoked any later, they would have just missed their timing. 
and they would have suspected something is up. So sometimes you just have to do it. It's like I, if I wait for all the dice, they're gonna be yeah. And again, the wards are on point. Also, you saw PPD tuck himself into the tree line here. What's the male's build? Is it Yule's? Is it something Necro else? Oh, Blink? Yeah, this Blink. Blink first, okay. Oh, mid lane? Dark Drow trying to apply some pressure as well. Looks like EG on the split push on both sides of the map. Definitely wanting to strike before the Radiance comes out, before the Gyro gets his BKB. Yeah, I think their timing is like right around 20. That's when Aegis will expire, and that's when he'll, he should have Radiance if he doesn't die. So Radiance their first priority is just protecting the Lone attack. Druid. The other heroes are oh, not as important. Looking for the Sun Strike here, I think? Or did he already use it? Oh, he already used it, okay. Radiance top tower Back on the top lane, EG. They are taking advantage of the power of the Drow to bring down the top tower. So another objective for them. But these are expected tower drops. The nature of their draft. You're not going to keep them all alive. Hopefully they have BKB on Super 2. By the and time now they call it out on the mid lane, trying to lock down RTZ, but he gets the help he needs. Universe is there. The cast keeps it going. OD ult's going to pop the Aegis. Not quite enough to kill off Universe, though. And now the Fissure comes through. Universe looking to turn this one around. Self banished, but Sumail is waiting. Thanks for the sunshine setup. No, the timing's not quite right. Then it gets put under by the Wyvern. Sumail now forced to turn and run away. The bear gets into the fray as well. Oh, Sumail almost there. Tough to get it perfect with the banish. That's the good part about Super's build. He is mega tanky with the treads and the drums and the ogre club. Like, you, you just, like, he's even an entrance. You'd have over 1500 HP with tons of armor to boot. He seems to die less than other ODs, and that is probably the main reason why, is just the way that he itemizes. Yeah, they need the BKB very early so that he can go aggro in the middle of, like, Invoker and whatnot. How's the... Uh, what's fear building? The standard medallion, or is he something else? Okay. Because uh, they're not they're not going to have an easy time bursting down the OD is this a Is this an Ags game? Do you go for, like, a completed Solar Crest? I, I feel like they don't have a great hero to throw it on. They they don't, but they, it, it, like everyone without a BKB will just melt, though if they do have a solar. But yeah, it's... I guess they, yeah, they can use it for the offensive aspect. It's not as great though, because OD will have BKB. It's really good versus the bear though, so I, I would like to see that at some point in the game. EG grouping up here in the mid lane. Three heroes gonna show their heads, and Arteezy is gonna get aggressive. The cast comes through, the creep's right next to him. Arteezy gotta micro that thing away. It keeps on bouncing back and forth again and again. My god, that was his own worst enemy. The cooldown now connects as well. Onto a few EG heroes. Fear on the right side of it. He's not called out as the Wyvern ultimate was used there. It's supposed to take any damage. Sunstrike coming through, trying to find finish off these backliners. FY will survive. Heals himself up. The meatball tries to roll him down, and in the end, Sumail with the backstab invoker play will get the kill. Universe barely squeaky went on a sliver of HP. And now the Invoker sweeping around from the rear. They're trying to isolate Burning in the middle of the river, but Arteezy low. Arteezy will go down. It's going to be up to Sumail to clean up from here. And he stands on the high ground with the back of Universe. The back above Universe, I should say. The Fissure assisting, but Sumail rooted, controlled. The Banish by Super. Is it going to be enough for him to live again? The Witch Doctor Hill's coming out. PPD gets the job done. A three for two thus far. And Universe does barely squeak away along with the Invoker. Very chaotic exchange there. But in the end, EG coming out on top big time. A lot of hectic things happening in the fight. The OD stopped the ES's blink at the start of the fight. EG were waiting for a counter initiation with like maybe a defensive swap on the Drow into an Echo Slam, but they could never get the blink online for ES. The, the, the Zillusion were just straight right clicked on them the whole entire time. But still, good swap into the high ground, although RTZ... Universe solo it. echo here is coming, Fissure, and got Fenrir. Got the whole creep wave too. Nice use there by PPD of the smoke mid-TP, setting that one up. So, Lone Druid didn't die, his rating should be online any time now. How's it, how's it looking for a Lone Druid? He's very close. Okay. So they need to stop the next the, the next Roche. EG got a lot from uh, that one, I would say. They they ideally wanted the T1 mid, but they got T1 top, T1 bottom, and some good kills on Vici, especially Gyrocopter. So with that fight, do you you think EG have gotten enough done so far? It's it's still really close. I think it, it depends. This is like a very very crucial moment. Vici are because they're about to get Radiance and double BKB. Yes. Yeah, and e EG they they need to do the Roche. 
uh, but I don't know if they can protect it very easily. They don't actually have any wards in this setup. At the same time, it's a little risky for Vici to walk in there, and they do not do Roche very quickly. Oh, that's, what the, that's what the bear's for. Oh, I mean in terms of like Vici trying to take it away from them. Yeah, the super will have BKB though very soon. So it looks like he's he'll have it at 600 gold, but hopefully they don't smoke under this ward or... Burning could also be a disaster. Close to his... Could be a disaster for them. PPD gets his aggressive ward up, as you mentioned. Actually got two in the Radiant Jungle. And Fenrir and FY are gonna move in here. Universe lumbers back, he's covering PPD's retreat. And the map is quite spread for EG right now. Not seeing them grouping up too much, just applying pressure in multiple lanes, Visage farming. What is Fear building next is a good question, I think, for the this, Visage. This is a good warning by PPD. Like, VT just had vision of the pit. They had a ward on the bottom rune, and then EG just sentried it, and then placed two wards to make sure that they have to smoke to get it. So this is definitely where they where they want to head, where the head where they want to head next yeah they know given how focused they're on pushing that they need that aegis advantage against vici yeah super bkb should be after this creep it's prime smoke timing this is it so who can get the jump on whom is universe going to be able to get a big echo are they going to get good vision with the bear is radiance going to stop someone's blink are the birds going to be able to scale them out? How do the gusts come out? There's a lot of things that can happen in this next fight. Yeah, do they pop the BKBs before Universe ambushes them? Yeah. Just... They might jump on a, like a Drow Illusion 2 with a Manta if micro properly. Universe blinking forward is going to unload a Fissure and trap Super on the wrong side of it. They try to get him out of there eating a tree, but uh, no follow-up. Mm. Too many Vici heroes off the map are in range to support. Vici are... Like, they're in a very good position to defend it, though, because of this T1 defense that they've had. And then they're using the Lone Druid Bear to push out on left, so EG don't identify that vulner like that weakness oh, in their lineup. Despite both smokes, or uh, both wards, rather, Vici still managed they, to get the smoke off on They kind of know, scene. though. They're suspicious, and they might reveal it with Universe. He's up on the high ground, not quite in position. Arteezy up in the Ancients as well. His creep down in the Roche pit. And they're creeping about. Uh, miraculously, nobody on Vici has actually broken their smoke yet, but like you said, EG definitely yeah, know. No. If they didn't already know, they definitely know now, and they're going to back away. But they're fighting away from the wards, though, which is good for Vici. You don't, you, if you're Vici, you expect them to have them in your own jungle, but not kind of not where uh, this ancient plus, plus large camp is. No dire vision of where, exactly where they Radiant's are, but they, they can see where they're not, <laughs> which tells you all you need to know. So is Arteezy's creep still in the pit? Is that small Slater? Yeah, they didn't finish it. So that's that's very important. So EG are like very comfortable that VG are just wasting their time right now. And they are split pushing with Sumail. He's going to blink out from the tree's top lane and work on the creep wave. Gets the really fast Mystic Staff. Radiant's so they have to be very careful to not get echoed. Does the universe have a smoke? He could easily get the jump. Nope, no, he's I think they're out or low. But one Echo could just... Oh, they're going to try to commit on Super here. They get the Fissure, the Chain Stun's quite good. He pops the BKB. EG just want to run away now. Even engaging with the Drum, but the Familiars are going to keep him back. They have to put him under with the Wyvern to keep him in fighting shape. And then Burning charges in. His BKB commit as well. There's the Curse. PPD should be finishing off his teammate. Will do so. Into the front lines goes Ice Ice Ice. And he will pay with his life. The one Druid overextends. Goes down. Then Universe. The counterplay. Big Echo knowing that those BKBs are down, but not quite enough damage to get the kill just yet. They will drop the Witch Doctor. Super again being saved, but only for a moment. Cleaned up by PPD. Burning gonna be next. The BKB's forced out, and then five heroes wiped away. EG. A very well orchestrated hold there. They have a six swap onto the lone druid. Eliminating him as easily as that with the drow just beating on him from the T3 high ground. That was a great fight for them to take, and of course the excellent echo coming out for him. Took too much damage on the OD before he's able to BKB, and then the fight was just not favorable for Vici. The Winter's Curse was not at the best best time too. Yeah, that hero was dead anyway, and it just delayed his death, if anything. Yeah, it kind of it was just at a really bad bad timing for them. And with that EG, very likely going to be taking this Roshan in short order. But overall, it's a good effort by EG. They have very good vision around the pit, so that Vici can't make a sneak maneuver on that. They have Sumail pressuring the left side, so that Vici like had to do something. And they, they decide to go for a T2 push, even though they don't really want to, because they know that if they don't do anything, they'll have to TP back in the forfeit Roche. So it's kind of the lesser of two evils, although in retrospect, they probably regret pushing that T2. You know, I feel for Vici, like, 
I am feeling that lack of an Ice 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 team fight hero right now. Not to say he's played a bad lone druid, but it feels like there's something missing for the team with him not on a, a Dark Seer, Tidehunter, or Phoenix. That's what the Winter's Curse is there for, but EG have a lot of range heroes. It's very difficult to actually get a get a jump like that. Oh, PPD, don't tell me he gets out of here. Universe, incredible fissure, and he is going to manage to walk away with the four step, even going for the swap back in. They want Ice Ice Ice. Wyvern there to try and keep him in fighting shape, but the Meteor starts to drop him low. PPD just so damn tanky. He's still standing in the middle of four BTRs. Finally, they're like, God damn it, Peter, you're going down. They're going to curse Universe as well. Hold him in position while the bear sets up. They all do find the rune, and with that, likely the Universe kill goes for the enchant totem. Can he finish off Ice Ice Ice? No, again, the Wyvern saves. While the curses haven't always been the best, the defensive play of FY has really kept Beachy in these fights. Looks like a looked like PPD was just invincible for a while there. I mean, look at his items. This is not how you usually see Peter. He has like a four staff treads and point booster too. Normally, you expect PPG to drop him like two hits. And then, I love how they popped both BKBs and jumped on him. But Sumail is going to reveal his sight device here. He went straight for it with the blink dagger, but they're trying to turn it a death ward, dropping him pretty low and forcing him back. They engage onto Arteezy. Call down comes through Arteezy. Low, low, and does get his Aegis popped. And with that, I think Vici will reset here. Sun Strike by Sumail on the fleeing heroes, but not able to connect for a kill. It's very strange that Sumail went in there. He didn't have vision on the high ground, and two of his heroes were down. So, like, if he does that and they, you know, all go in a save and they have a big echo, that's one thing. But there was no real follow-up to the to the hex, and of course, Vici have full vision around that area. But they do get what two kills, Aegis at the end of the day. Things not going so badly for Vici. They do need like a AC on the bear very quickly, though. It's going Vlad's armor is good. And Drow is working towards her butterfly, very likely. Arteezy, that's a big pickup for him, and he's not far off of it. Yep. He can still get owned by the Sandy's Eclipse, though. I wonder what OD is. Is he like Blink, Hex, Shiva's for OD? What's for Super. For? Shiva's. Okay. Armor. That's how they want to do it. And then I think usually he goes Blink and then Hex after this. And what's Winter of Wyvern? Is it Glimmer or Blink? We got Aether Lens. Aether Lens, okay. He needs to be able to get some good Winter's Curses. At, at the same time, Universe hasn't had, like... He had the one really good Echo mid, which good. they team wiped, but outside of that. But both teams fantastic about their positioning in team fights, making sure not to clump. Uh, and Fizz run here for old Sumail. Is scouting, but doesn't see any opportunities. Meanwhile, the Venge bottom lane may get jumped momentarily. They do have a lane ward on PPD. Ichi just creeping in, but they're worried about what sits behind Avenge and don't want to risk much just for that support. So the Vlads is now complete on the bear. But they see ES, so this is... It's always good when you have vision of the ES. He needs to be able to hide. They dewarded the high ground ward though, so Vichy don't feel terribly comfortable. Oh, uh, they are going to commit this one. They go straight in with the curse on the field. The Fisher comes through, connects on two, but Super's up in front. Tornado won't hit him. Burning now, dropping the call down and trying to lock him down. The Venge is there. PPD is maybe going to look for a swap, and instead goes for the four step. And Fear ends up dropping. They lose the Vistage. They may also lose PPD. Both supports likely down. He's into the trees. The OD ult is going to end any shenanigans on the retreat. Universe still biding his time, waiting for the Echo. He's kind of had to time out these BKBs. He goes in, but he only catches Burning and the Bear. Not sure that's going to be enough in this fight with the Death Ward coming through. Fenrir in fantastic high ground position. Zone ZG back. They're going to isolate Sumail, keep him away from Arteezy, turn back for him. And oh, the Manta. This could be the thing that keeps him alive until an instant root from Ice Ice Ice. Cleans him up, four down. VG Gaming, their turn for a big team fight, and their turn for big objectives. Who needs Ravages when you have casts? <laughs> My goodness. The cast bounce from the Visage to the Venge into the Shaker, and without that blink up, they just cannot take a fight, and it's it's a rough life for Earthshaker. Looking like Vici might have hit critical mass with that, and no Echo. That's the, that's the ability they need to easily defend this. They're gonna have to really grind it out otherwise. Fear sitting back and he has a respawn now with the Forge Spirits, but Vici very tanky with the Vlads. So the physical damage does less and less, it feels. And PPD, although he's in, can't really offer much resistance. The tower's nearly dead, the bear's up in front. And we'll end up going down here, but they have a fresh BKB ready to go on Bernie. He's gonna pop the call down. They've killed off the Rax. Looks like Vici likely to retreat now. Super swapped in deeper. They want to force Vici to stick around, try to pick them off one by one, and. They will just sack Super and walk away, so 
Good job by Vici there, cutting their losses, and more importantly, taking the first lane of Rex. That was strange that he got cold embrace there. He was really close to his BKB, so maybe they were hoping that he would be able to just BKB out of there. Nice pick off by EG. Fenner is 3k net worth now. Or, uh, sorry, 3k uh, gold banked up now. After that fight <laughs> so bottom. FY. What do you buy is these supports? So EG are kind of paying for their use of their smokes though. They smoked Venge a lot to get down good vision, but they haven't been able to get a good jump on ES because they keep uh, scouting him either with a bear or with an observer ward. So it and it's also tough against the the radiance burn to yeah. actually get a good initiation. It's off. super tough. That's that's why generally. Like, you want just someone, like, super tanky up in front, Bristleback, Tidehunter, these sort of heroes, so that you, you, don't need, you don't need to blink up. You get vision of them rather than getting vision uh -oh. of them. They're looking for Ice Ice Ice. They've gone on a hunting party here into the trees, Arteezy. Scouting oh. for him, but Ice Ice Ice, not teleporting out yet. He's leaving the bear around, and oh, man, that bear is getting beaten. Now the hero gets away. But that will be 300 gold, so EG with a, a miniature success. Killing off the panda. But use the smoke though. They, they're they like very, very low on smokes and haven't really connected on any of them. They desperately want like a, you know, two pick, two man pick into a tower uh, with the smokes, but they're getting not as much as they would like. 10 minutes until EG can buy a new one, it looked like there. That's a long time to go, especially when you're down a lane of Rax. And while well, speaking of smokes, it's Vici's turn. They want to fight top. They've got some decent initiation here. They've got Glimmer Cape to start the fight burning. He's going to reveal himself and then Vici move in and get a beautiful curse out on FY. Arteezy is going to shred Universe. They don't have the Shaker for this fight and that makes it nigh impossible to do anything but run away. The birds will be cleaned up. One will just get off a quick stun and Arteezy being hunted by a homie missile here. He's already popped the Manta as well as the Flutter. It looks like Arteezy's okay for now. He's gonna gust back the bear. Nice control here and needs a little more help. But the bear keeps on running in. Tornado, along with the meatball, comes through. Not enough to finish off. Super, unfortunately. Sunstrike, scouting for support. So maybe trying to find a little extra damage on Super. Still not enough as the bear continues to work on Arteezy. That evasion is what he desperately needs to stay alive. Gets in front, starts body blocking with the hero. Continues to hunt him from tier two top on the radiant side, all the way back to tier three dire. But he doesn't get that last route necessary. Just gonna have to do it with Radiance Burn. Again, the gust, again, the chase. Daryl keeps on going deeper and deeper, and he will finally bring down Arteezy. Earthshaker only just now respawning seconds late after the buzzer. Ice 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 though, he's in pretty far. Can he make it out? Tornado comes through. That's going to be enough to finish off the bear. And now the hero will be controlled and dealt with. So, well, he gets the kill, but he pays the ultimate price for it. My god, Arteezy is really hard to hunt down. At the end of the day, Vichy just need to stall until Draw Ranger is forced to get like a BKB. If she gets, if she's forced to get BKB, they'll fall super far behind in fights because her her damage output simply won't be high enough. Ideally, you want to be able to just get tons of stats on uh, Draw Ranger, but this is kind of the start of where she starts to fall off. And they're doing a really good job again of controlling the Earthshaker. Vichy have just been excelling at that every single fight except for the mid T2. Oh, they found Universe here. Banish by Super has the ulti available, but instead he's just going to go for the TP out. And we'll make it in time. So, yeah, I mean, to, to talk a little more about your point, they don't really have a traditional Drow counter, as they're having a fish here for Fenrir with the Tornado. They don't have, like, a Clockwork or a Centaur, but their carries can just man up on the Drow. The Butterfly Gyro, the... We saw already the Lone Druid can just run her down. So it seems like they do have some pretty good tools to deal with him. FY, no tools for him to deal with EG. Completely caught out, gets punished. Super already quit his BKB for that TP out earlier, so he's gonna get chased on EG, finding the way back into this burning. Likely to be next, controlled and blasted away. EG right back in the driver's seat with two huge core pickoffs there. And now looking for the mid push. Wow. Just when you think one team's getting control of the game, it's the other team's turn to have a big fight. Vici, they overestimate the importance of Drow. <laughs> they're like, oh, we're good. 44, right? No Drow. Let's do this. But they're they're losing so much off this. And Super kind of wasted his BKB. Burning just had to buy back for this. Yeah, they, they can't lose next Roche, though. And it looks like EG are going to head over there. If Super doesn't buy back, they can't contest it. Now Vici deciding they don't want to lose the Roche and they don't want to risk EG taking a lane of Rax with the heavy push they bring to bear. Arteezy into the pit now. 
and EG are gonna look for that Roshan, but already you can see Burning jetting his way through the Radiant Jungle with the team not far behind him. He's gonna clear out this mid wave, and then I'm at, oh, well, okay, Roche is dead, so never mind that. <laughs> I think they were planning on moving towards the pit after that, but EG killed that thing in like four seconds flat. Yeah, breath They're of setting life. some land speed records here. That's the Stroh lineup for you. Take it out super quickly. But the thing is, the Aegis is not necessarily that good for EG. I mean, it's much better than Vici getting it, sure, but we've seen this Drow. If she gets caught out and dies once, she will just die two times. But they're limiting the the Gyro's farm. He, had, he died and then he bought back and then he didn't get anything out of it, too. So that's like kind of 2,000 net worth that was just lost, and they lost a huge objective after that, too. Yeah, perhaps that's even bigger than the Aegis this game. Yeah. If they had the Aegis on, let's say, Lone Druid, and then he can just kind of sacrifice himself for the Drowling team fights, then Vici can kind of cruise control uh, in their next couple of fights. But with, the, with that Roche and with those nice uh, aggressive maneuvers from EG, they're right back in the game. And they're grouping up top as we see Vici sitting back now. While EG are a good push team lineup, Vici are a very strong high ground defense lineup as well. Tons of AoE, massive team fight and control. And some big ultimates that pierce BKBs for these supports, so... It's definitely still a case where EG need to be careful in their approach. But they are gonna go for it. It's about that time though, Sumil can take control of the game. The BKBs are getting less and less on Vici, and then he has a ton of items. And he does have the eggs now, and the BKB. And cheese to boot! That's some good stuff right there. That's a very premature glyph. Drill wasn't even hitting the tower. And she'll take full advantage of it. They get the swap off on FY, but four staff back to try to save him. He has been hexed up. They really want to take the Wyvern out of the fight immediately if possible. FY on the run, still hanging on to the ultimate. He's shown some great patience here. Arteezy, that's death number one. They commit the Odeal for The Witcher's Curse just got used in the mid lane, but while that's happening, Echo Slam from Universe is going to blow up Burning. That's a dieback. No Gyrocopter. The Spear Bear also falling. And they still have not managed to get a kill with this Winter's Curse. Finally, Sumail may go down. FY not able to finish the job. EG, all of them hanging on by a thread as Super gets back into it. Going for round two on PPD. Fisher almost blocking him out of the base. The Radiance Bird will finish off one. Maybe can get Universe as well, but still RTZ stands strong. They're going to buy back of the Venge. EG knowing that this is their time to try and push in and take a lane of Rex. But Sumail's just so damn low. I'm not sure they can do it. What's our fight recap looking like? Dang, they lost. Did they lose a gem too? Is that Vici's gem that Invoker's holding? Um. Oh, yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, so I fight got caught up. Maybe they didn't notice a cheese on him. Uh oh, Arteezy. He's out pretty far here. Does have a bit of help from the Invoker, but Sumail's so low that sticking around is going to be difficult for him. Tricky business at best. They get the Shivas on Arteezy and now the bear starts to hunt. They drop a defensive ice wall, hex up the bear, and chase is over, folks. So, good disengage. As you mentioned, the Invoker is going to become more and more of a threat as this game heads towards the late game. 39 minutes in, 20 to 22 the score, and overall, looking at the the rack situation here, it's about even with, uh, I believe EG did manage to take down the melee top during that. They did. So do the supports have enough items on Vici to compensate for Gyro's slight under farmage? Do they have like Scepter on Witch Doctor? Nope, he went for Ghost instead. Ice Ice Ice, still no AC. Okay, he just picked it up. But Burning is actually still kind of poor. That buyback. That buyback really hurt him. Yeah. So they've been getting a lot of mileage from EG's lineup, even without a big echo. Like, a, a two-man echo before they BKB is just like... will almost instantly seal them a team fight victory and probably another Rax. So they have to be very careful, make sure that they can continue to get vision on the Shaker. They really need a good Winter's Curse, too. Yeah, that fight, it looked like from the minimap that he had used it on the mid lane on... Like invoker? I, the Invoker, because he dropped quite low, but they didn't even get the kill, and Invoker had already used pretty much everything prior to that. They were so close to killing him, though. And like 90 HP after popping cheese. Well played by Sumail to stay alive. But it, it shows the power of the Venge, because the whole fight started on EG's terms with PPD swapping the Wyvern out. They had to use a Force Staff to try and save him. FY was always low HP, so he, he couldn't really be as aggressive looking for the perfect curse there.
Yep, Radiant's they have the Blink Hex combination too. So this is where like Wyvern really has to be there instantly with like a glimmer or glimmer into a cold embrace or a counter curse to stop that swap initiation. EG five bottom. Do they actually press in? They did just complete a BKB on the Drow, so Arteezy not saving for buyback currently, feeling that he just needs as many items as possible to break this base. And they are close to, in fact, they have an Ags on Fear now. It's on the, the late end with the Atos pit stop, but still a big item for EG in terms of the tower killing potential the team has. So how many, do they have any smokes on Vichy side? Nope, no smokes anywhere. Okay. One smoke and that's gonna be it for a very long time. I think EG can very likely end the game with the next Aegis. Another cheese on Invoker, another Aegis on Drow Ranger. It's too much economic damage to Vichy and too much structural damage. That I think they have to make a move before that. But if you make it right before Roche, it's too obvious. So maybe you want to use it a few minutes before. Vichy, I mean, will make that smoke move. Ooh, they and... passed him the DD bottle too on burning. Nice. They charge down mid. The bear is clearing out the wave. FY is way out in front here. He wants to make it go, and PPD is going to tank the whole thing. They started with the curse, but they get the hex off from burning. Lock him in position. Glimmer Cape keeps him alive. PPD with the four step back, and EG scattering. So many BKBs committed by VG Gaming. They got to start racking up the kills here. They have managed to kill off just the Venge. No buyback on PPD. And as far as supports go, one of the more important ones. But is it really enough for Vichy to go high ground? And do they know the Venge doesn't have buyback as well? Still Echo and there's no PKBs on Vichy. This is it's very, risky. very dangerous. They do have the double damage rune, and they are a team with a low druid. So it seems that they're feeling like maybe we can force our way in. But Fenrir is grouping up together with the bear and you know Universe is just sitting back waiting for that echo over to the right of your screen. He's going to make the jump, but there's the Banish. Committed save here from VG Gaming. They're also going to have the Wyvern save potentially to turn this one around. Can Universe get the job done? The Meatball rolls directly over the Fissure. Burning away, Mr. Burning. How fitting. Death by his own name. And he will be forced back. 70 seconds on the sideline. They now turn for FY. Invoker really starting to work his magic sun strikes there. Not enough to kill him off though. Kept alive for the time being. Super will be next. Arteezy does get rooted, but meanwhile Familiar is forcing the bear back and Arteezy is able to get up in front. The bear turns on to fear, not going to kill him off, kited, controlled, and dead, EG do end up holding high ground. It wasn't the scariest looking echo, but the follow the subsequent follow-up from the invoker really did them in. Again, VG feel pressured, so pressured to, to do something. Those birds destroyed OD during the BKB, even with Shiva's. I was a little surprised VG wanted to go for that Radiant's after all the BKBs got used. Sumail is just taking over the middle Radiant's lane before the team can even get there. He BOT'd in top. And he has brought down the tier 3 tower. Now the melee rack's gonna fall next. EG looking for the game 1 win here. And very close to it. With a second lane of racks dropping. Multiple buybacks being forced out. Deaths here on the cores for Vichy will spell certain doom for the team. And EG are gonna force them to come to the fight. Sunstrike lobbed out. Just a warning shot to call down for burning. The racks are already dead. It's mega creeps. They're about to have to go all in here. The range racks mid is very close to dropping as the... The Creeps continue marching and they will finish it, so it's official. Megas are out, and Arteezy, though he dies, has made a noble sacrifice for the squad. I mean, can Vici even try for a play here? Can they handle Mega Creeps? Things get very dark now. That's just the risk of smoking too early before Roche. They they want to do it because a smoke right before Roche is too expected. So they try to do it a little bit beforehand and catch uh, catch EG off guard. But the risk is if you don't get a big kill, you can't transition into anything. Like Venge's life is just simply not important enough to to trade your two BKBs and then push into a high ground for it. But they still wanted to because they didn't have any smokes. So Are that's, they just that's going all in mid now? Because uh, yeah, Lone Druid's still to. top. <laughs> there's, no, there's no other option. Ice 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 doesn't have bots though, right? Okay, yeah. he's going to start running now. I mean, it's potentially they could stall for a, a Rapier on Burning, but if they wait that long, EG will just take Roche. He's and, and so poor though. Yeah, they, they cannot do that. This is it. Universe. And Universe, he knows stalling is the key here. 
He just needs like a half decent echo or just to stall until Mega Creep's pushing the side lane. You kill one core for Vichy, the OD or the Gyro, and that's a dieback. Wow, I I'm surprised they didn't swap hex the. Uh, they go for the four step into the stun here, though, and then the Fissure follows it up again. Beautiful combo from EG. Universe rushes in, almost finishes up super. Four step away is going to allow him to dodge that killing blow from the Sunstrike, but he's out of the picture now. Burning gets swapped into tier four towers. Chain stun for days by the Invoker. Super's going to come in. Accept my sacrifice. That's a Double dieback for Vici. Creeps are marching into the radiant base. They have to go all in for the throne here, but they don't have the firepower to do it. And Ice 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 will be next on the docket. That's the GG. Drow's already TP'd into the radiant base to, to throw them, and they will tap out. EG taking a crazy game here. Felt like there were at least eight swings in momentum. One team wins a team fight, then it's the other team's turn, but EG, they win the last decisive few. EG showing their excellent late game decision making yet again, and EG have typically have a very good record against Vici, especially because I think they're the superior team post like 30 minutes, and Vici, unfortunately for EG, have the potential to end the game early, but they just had that one slip out, I would think, right before that uh, Roche or Super 